As many as 97% of girls and women in Somaliland are believed to have undergone the procedure. It involves cutting some or all of the external genitalia and commonly sewing up the genitalia, leaving a small hole for blood and urine to pass. It is an ancient practice in Somaliland and throughout the Horn of Africa. Halimo Elmi Welie manages an FGM awareness project at Care International that aims to convince communities to abandon the practice. She says there are many reasons why people practice FGM, one being that it is believed to prepare women for marriage. The reason why they are practicing, if woman does not circumcise, she becomes sexually very active. You see, and then she can, when she ever she goes out, she tries to rape even the men. You see, so in order to reduce that kind of sensitivity, we have to remove this kind of organ. Most women who have undergone FGM experience a wide range of medical problems, including acute bleeding, urinary infections, infertility, complications giving birth, and even damage to the baby. Edna Adan Ismail is the founder of a maternity hospital in Somaliland's capital, Hargeisa and one of the first healthcare professionals to bring the issue of FGM to the world's attention. She describes what happened to one 12-year-old girl whose opening in her sewn-up genitalia was too small. The abdomen was distended, there was abdominal pain, and we did an ultrasound scan. And we, of course, is she pregnant? Why, you know, why is the abdomen distending? And of course, the, the, the diagnosis was that this young lady, this young girl, had been menstruating and the blood had been collecting inside her body all these months. Ismail says a too small opening can also spell disaster for marital relations. They bring the woman, the bride, to us on her wedding night, hemorrhaging like crazy. We suture, we stop the bleeding, we, you know, we take care of it. We let her go home. She's brought back the following night with an with a m even more severe hemorrhage because the wound that we had sutured and, and the bleeding points that we had stopped were not given a chance to heal by the husband who forced himself on this girl. Activists say that the situation is slowly changing as people talk more and more openly about FGM and the harm it causes, with some women rejecting the practice for themselves or their daughters. This mother describes why she prevented her daughter from undergoing FGM. I have experienced many problems myself, and my sister died because of FGM. She bled to death. I do not like any forms of FGM. My daughter does not wish to do a practice that goes against the Quran. Activists say some communities are starting to challenge the practice of FGM. Care International's Halimo Elmi Welia says that she and her staff ask communities to describe the complications they experience from FGM and come up with possible solutions. Most of them they are saying we have to stop and at the same time some of them they are saying we have to at least get in the centers. If we, some, those who want us to continue the practice, they said we have to train a qualified midwives at least who can use a clean materials which we can prevent HIV or all blood transmission infections. But Edna Adan Ismail and others say the pace of change is slow and that girls and women will continue to suffer needlessly until certain traditional attitudes are changed. <laughs> Kathy Maitney for VOA News. Uh. <laughs>